Congratulations to those who won public speaking. That's um, a great course. I took that many years ago in between, you know, heavy shifts because I knew this is going to be my destiny. That's uh, okay, it's working perfect. Nice. All right, UX for EX, treating our employees as if they are consumers in the workplace. Before we start, for those of you who have seen me speak, you should know by now that I'm going to involve you in this keynote, even if it's just the keynote and not a full-blown training. So we're gonna start with a question, all right? How many of you in this room implemented an HR technology during the pandemic? It could be big, as big as what? Success factors or workday, an HRIS, or it could be as easy as automating a registration form. Raise your hands, please. How many of you did something to digitize or automate a process? How many? Okay, I see some. Really? Only a few? You didn't, you didn't implement anything in the HR tech space during the pandemic? No? Oh, oh, okay, well, there are some people, but the world has seen phenomenal growth in the HR tech industry. I don't belong to one, but I love technology, so I follow. From about 23.9 billion of an industry HR tech before the pandemic, they're now at 40 US billion dollar industry. And that must meant people around the world consumed HR technology. Indeed, COVID-19 expedited our growth with and transformation when it comes to technology. Point taken? Yeah? All right. So that's the good news and congratulations to those, as soon as I get this clicker going, congratulations to those that transform digitally during the pandemic. What a time, right, to implement change. That's the good news, congratulations. There's good news, there's also bad news. According to McKinsey though, 70% of companies that implemented technology are not exactly happy with the results of their implementation. Meaning there were expectations when that technology was about to be implemented and that's what propelled the decision making. But after implementation, after so many, you know, difficult nights figuring out the code, right? Still, companies are not happy with the result. 70%. Because the bad news there is it is not enough to just implement and digitize, all right? So now let's together find out why the bad news. But before that, you see the paradox here is companies spend for HR technology, right? If you have brilliant minds within your teams that would design your Google Forms, that's already digitizing your forms, right? It's still effort, money, right? That we pour into these projects. And yet, sometimes, according to Federico Fancioni, and 70% of the time, according to McKinsey, in all likelihood, I'm gonna read it out loud, out loud, in all likelihood, investing in that new shiny tool for your employees could make their experience Thank you for reading it with me. Let's wear our HR hats. Sherm, Josh Persian, whichever HR consultancy group you Google, if you Google employee lifecycle, 
or probably already know it because you are HR practitioners, right? That this is our guide. When you create structures, design processes, right? We go back to the employee life cycle. It's like learning your ABCs in HR. Yep. Yeah? And what happens in there? We look at attraction, recruiting, engage onboarding, engagement, which includes developing people to retain them, to help them grow within the organization. And yet after developing them, they leave after the training bond generation has been consumed. <laughs> but that's part of the cycle. Because there's separation in as much as there is retention. Right? And so we do offboarding. This is the cycle, yes? Whatever thought process you subscribe to, this is mainly it. What's missing? Any guess? What's missing? Who's missing? You know who these are? The employees. We are missing the employees in that cycle. What are you talking about? They're the ones that separate. They're the ones that we develop. They're the ones that we attract. That's not what I mean. Who created the chart? Who created the diagram? Who spends the money? Let's just simplify the question. Who spends the money? The owner, the organization. Therefore, the perspective is from whose standpoint? The company. It is work process. That's how we grind. It's about the perspective of the company. So, the first thing to do is the paradigm to paradigm shift to look at it from the perspective of the employee. Because today, if we're not treating our employees as consumers, we're getting it wrong. The only way to be irresistible, next, I think, irresistible today is to treat your employees like consumers. You're using an iPhone. Why are you using an iPhone? Easier to use. Easier to use. Easier for you, Apple, because I like iOS over Android. And I want to organize the apps that I use. I'm a consumer. I want to organize the apps that I use for my own liking. Like all work applications together. All travel applications together. Right? Because I am a consumer. But, how did we get here? But, but in this world where you have a 40 billion dollar US dollar HR tech industry, that's just for HR tech, this is what happens to an employee. You invest in technology and you intend to simplify life for the employees. Efficiency is the word from the perspective of the employer, the company, but this is the experience of your employee. This is a nightmare if you don't have single sign-on process. Because you forget your login credentials for your DocuSign, for your work day, for... Oh my God. Just probably in your personal life, you're like, where did I get that message from? Viber, what's up? LinkedIn. Crazy, right? So what must we do? Then don't use technology. <laughs> Just stay with the old traditional forms because it could be confusing. Not to mention it's expensive and it keeps developing. So what you implement now is outdated by a year from now, right? Well, tools are necessary. Let that sink in. It's necessary and the only way for us to sustainably use technology is to iterate and more. When I say more, I mean consider the day-to-day micro-experience of the users of the systems that we implement as if they're just as big 
ask, for example, are your leave benefits? Because if you have been reading, employee experience is not about the cupcakes that you give away during their birthdays or the pancit that we serve during Christmas parties. It is about the day-to-day -day experience. Yeah? And so having said that, let's define this a little bit. And I also simplified it, something that you could all relate if you Google, which is the definition of user experience. And what does it say? It says UX, or user experience, is how a user interacts with and experience a product, system, or service, including one's perception of utility. Ease of use, can we just highlight, underscore that virtually, and efficiency. I am not going to train you on this because we don't have time. But basically, when we say user experience, it is a thought about framework that we need to use when implementing technology. It's not, it's not like you look at the stars and you get the insight. It has to be deliberately studied. And because this has matured already on the tech space, it means that to use user experience when implementing technology is first to research, to empathize. What is the number one skill in the world amongst leaders today? Number one skill? It's behavioral. It's right in front of you. Empathy. Right? The ones that win the war for talent are the ones that do that best and generally. Guess what? You can apply it to in projects as, you know, technology. Hard to imagine, but yes, create, meaning make it simple. Don't just buy off the rack. Well, it's good if it's already attuned to what your people need. But if it is not, you've got to customize it. Maybe not customize, iterate. Whatever works for you. Test. Test, test, test. And when we test, don't contain it within HR. Involve the users. They're the ones that know what works and what don't. Develop. Don't, don't stop there. Don't, don't stop. Please, iterate, ask for feedback, keep the feedback loop, keep it going, and funnel it in when you review it. Intelligently designed systems or interface can bridge the gap between what? We're all employees here, unless there are business owners here that are not employed by their own companies. Between what employees want and the capability of technology. Right? You'll be surprised at how much it's not happiness. How much more satisfied employees could get if we answer this. And if I could get this working really well. Alright, so far I talked about things that you can Google. Haha. <laughs> right? Just know the keywords and spend time to read or spend some time for podcasts or watch YouTube videos, you'd see them. So <clears throat> what I want to share with you today are things that you won't be able to read. All right, so let's talk about real life experiences in bringing to life user experience for employee experience. And the first one is, do I, do I have recruiters in the room? Yeah, raise your hands, come on. You, your skill is one of the top 100 hottest skills in the world, along with the developers, yeah? And you know why? It's so hard to recruit. <laughs> Consumers, right? It is their market, not ours. Can you offer it to your job? Okay, let's right? It is so hard. And so for recruiters in the room, I, I grew in recruitment. That's, that's where I started in, in this profession. And so, what if everyone can be a recruiter for you? What if I could make, how many, how many people are in this room now? Maybe over 100? 
over 100, what if all of you will refer to acquire BPO, right? And I had this thinking as I was shopping at the mall, right? I was thinking, what if all the employees of the merchants can be my recruiters without having to employ them? That solves a lot of problems. Uh -huh. But in having that idea, how do they then refer to me? It's not sustainable. If they will just get to know me and they will vibrate me. I don't like that. So, this has grown from having a link in posters to a QR code. In fact, you could scan that code and see how you can get a refer at the Acquire BPO. We pay as much as 10,000 plugin, but you get the point, right? It doesn't get forgotten because you just scan the QR. When the pandemic happened and we got a lockdown announcement, that time it was not but the grocery. March 17 was the start of the lockdown. And if you recall, essential workers either have to be housed near offices so they can walk to the workplace, you remember that? Or you rally van shuttle services to take your employees from point A to the office, yeah? All right, and in the beginning, LGUs had their own rules. They had the police manning every um, borders, right? So if you're from Pasig to Taguig and you work at BGC, good luck, right? Either, either mag bicycle ride ka, kung minanas malas ka pa, you'll still be asked for your certificate of employment to prove that you are an essential worker. So, announcement was March 15th, I wouldn't forget because we were overnight in one room together with the CEO, CTO, all the C titles in the room. We were on Zoom figuring out what to do because we are never closing doors. Some of our competitions did. They didn't know what to do those two nights, right? But we were there. And you know, after that meeting, what for HR was done in partnership with the Chief Technology Officer, it is in three clicks make the certificate of employment available at the very fingertips of all our employees. No need to see HR, because I'm also short of people because there were so many things we had to do during the pandemic, yeah? Three clicks. At a place that you can access anytime, anywhere. And then, vaccines happened. Thank God, right? So then they got delivered here, and then IATF came up with resolution zero, Four six dash A and dash B. We have iterations then. All right. What did we do there? We needed to align to that resolution. Although there are many, many SC, I think merit of court case. But as employers, no vaccine, no entry. Otherwise, you show proof that you negatively tested. Right. So I did want four months. The goal was for the employees to be able to come to work, earn their money without the hassle that it would normally take. If we could help it, if we could help it. And so, if you were working with Acquire BPO, you don't need to bring your vaccination card. All you need is your ID card, which you, by the way, have to bring every time you come to work, tap it, and if you gave us a copy of your, you uploaded a copy of your vaccination card, and it's not Mickey Mouse that you uploaded, because you validated, you go through. If you do not have a validated vax card, you can't get through. And you have to speak with your manager. If you uploaded your negative test, you'll get through. So you don't have to bring your card, right? It's for the user, not so much for us. And I'll add this point because it's very important. Well, we designed the validation system for this um, door access based on vaccination. We were, I was personally evaluating, if you have work day here and you have a registration system here, and whatever was uploaded by the employee is in one system, the access has to be recorded in another system 
then my people need to have two screens, the administrators, two screens to look at to validate. Otherwise, they'll miss accuracy, right? And if I were that HRIS person, my, my eyes are gonna get tired very easily, including my neck. They're gonna get sick. So what did we do? We timed that to be five minutes. What did we do? We designed a form and a validation process where your, your eyes will move from left to right. You don't need two screens. You don't need multiple windows open. Left to right. Scanned information here. So now you will see, is this valid? Move your eyes here, type in whether it's valid or not, and you're good to go. Just two checks. That's less than two minutes from five minutes when we typed it. So when I say user, I don't only mean people non-HR. Oh my God, I can't stress this any further. You have to also protect your people from burnout and, and stress in administering systems that are very demanding from an effort and energy standpoint for the security users. Here, yeah, making sense so far? Empathy, no? Starts from HR for HR. And then there's this intelligent system. Prior to the pandemic, I already used this. Um, I'm not plugging for this company, so I won't say the name anymore, but there's technology out there that would let you sense whether people are available or not for something outside production. You know how coaching sessions are skipped because people are so busy? Right? Yes. And how much more training like this? Right? Or quick training on Excel. How to pivot. Right? This technology, what it does, and it's apt for our industry. I'm not saying it works for all industry. Um, you've got to figure out what works for you, but this is an example. So in the BPO industry, our production people, we monitor whether they're doing a transaction or not, whether it's an after call work or not, all right? So we see that. So what happens is, if they're not working on a customer, then a pop-up, is there as a reminder for either your training or a coaching like this one. It, it works solid. Very timely. Who's giving away Christmas baskets, hams, wine? Whatever is in your basket, right? If, if we still have people unloading from trucks of groceries and repacking them within our teams, it's time to take and hopefully learn from this session. Um, so I did want my team to spend their time on that. We have more intelligent work to do than that, right? I left it with SM. So I partnered with SM. Um, so I initiated the partnership, hopefully got the approval. And so what we do today is, because our people go to the grocery store, right, and most of the time it's SM, there's SM everywhere, we partnered with them, they just need to tell us which store they're picking it up from, which branch, and they get their baskets there in time for their grocery shopping, right? And that's, that's online, of course, that registration is gonna get crazy if it's not. So, I said so many things, applications may be different, because your industries may be different from mine, for sure, but what are my points? Self-service. Self-service, self-service, self-service. Always push for it. Choose that pain. They're going to complain. But if you stick with your system, they're going to complain also anyways. All right, so choose the pain of self-service. That's my solid tip. Next, make it available at your, uh, for your employees anytime, anywhere, at the tip of their fingers. Keep it to a few clicks, will you? Huh? Keep it easy and use clear language. Don't say, I'm going to, can you salvage this file? Do you want to salvage this file? Click on this one, save, okay? okay? Um, and make it easy for your admins too. So before I end this talk, of all the things I blabbered about, what I really would like to leave you with is user experience 
It's important for employee experience because if you empathize, if we empathize with our employees, those are the little things that matter. Because after all, employees are consumers that are located at the workplace. Thank you and have fun learning. Thank you.